Hello, I'm Abhya X Toycat, and one of the biggest factors which led to Minecraft being the best selling game of all time is the fact that it's available on so many different platforms. And one big part of that was down to 4J Studios, a game developer who is mostly known for porting Minecraft to various different console platforms. Seven of them, in fact, by the time they released Minecraft Switch Edition. And this led to the kind of big question we've always had, which is what would 4J do after they were finished working on Minecraft? Because we know for a while now that Microsoft wanted to bring all of that in house, and as of December 2019, all of that has been brought in-house with the release of Minecraft PlayStation 4 Bedrock, and therefore there is now a software development team at 4J Studios, which hasn't been working on Minecraft console since the last update for Minecraft PlayStation 4, which of course happened a full month ago. And therefore the question becomes, what is 4J going to do? Are they just going to fully disband the software development team now they don't have a use for them and become entirely a Minecraft marketplace developer? That'd be a weird transition. So no, instead, something very exciting this week came out because 4J Studios confirmed that they'll be working on new games this year and we will give more info when we can but expect us to be quieter than normal. Get that, 4J Studios is now going to be moving on from something beyond Minecraft and this is of course a very big deal because this is a developer who has not made anything that wasn't a Minecraft port, at least hasn't made it officially, in the last decade. It was 2010 when, My uh, when 4J Studios officially released their last game which was Perfect Dark for the N64, ported to the Xbox 360 arcade. This is funnily enough what led to them uh, you know, eventually porting Minecraft to the 360 which eventually led to the huge success because they did believe in the project, they did fund it themselves, and as a result, when Minecraft on consoles blew up, uh, as part of that, 4J has of course blown up too, as I'm sure you've seen uh, by the, you know, the huge expansion of the studio as a whole. However, the question becomes, what exactly comes next? And that's where today's video focuses, because I think something Minecraft related, while entirely out of the Microsoft universe, entirely out of the Minecraft universe, is mostly on the cards, and let me explain why with today's video. And let's start by actually going through that discography you just saw, where we proved that there's been over 10 years without a single non-Minecraft related product coming out from 4J Studios because yeah if you look at that same list you can see how 4J Studios has been around since 2004 and uh, actually for the last uh, you know for every single game besides the first two on that list uh, you can see how they're all ports from a platform to another platform. The Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion for the PlayStation 4 funnily enough released by uh, you know 4J Studios. Overlord Raising Hell for the PlayStation 3 funnily enough released by 4J Studios. Even stuff like the Banjo-Kazooie games and Banjo-Tooie which exact exists right now on 360 and indeed on Xbox One, if you play those games on your Xbox One, you're actually playing a 4J Studios game. And even if you look at the two games they released before that, Star Trek Encounters and Breeders' Cup World Thoroughbred Championships, real games made by 4J. Uh, but if you look at those games, they are actually, uh, you know, by the Bethesda published games and funded, etc. They just did the grunt work for development for some other project for someone else. This is, a lot of game studios do this and therefore aren't quite as widely known as the EA's Bethesda's or, you know, like any other, you know, small team like that because they mostly do the work but don't receive receive uh, you know, proportional profits. Their, their staff are paid for the work that they're doing mostly, and therefore they don't get points on the back end or whatever you might say if you're relating to the movie terms. But basically, they have a mostly port-based studio because, of course, Minecraft on all those consoles, they weren't unique games. It was Minecraft ported very well given the limitations of the platforms they were all on. And uh, this raises the thing of like, so obviously, they're going to move on to porting next, right? My 4J Studios are going to become another studio that port games again. You know, like they might look at the new Skyrim game and start porting that and stuff. But here's Here's the deal about porting. Porting is nowhere near as big as it used to be back in the early 2000s and indeed the 90s because most games now, if they need to launch on lots of platforms, they launch the same game on different platforms and just kind of show it onto there. And you might say, wait a minute, what? They just show, like, they don't port games properly, they just kind of release them. And you might be like, oh, that's crazy, of course, that's not a thing. But look at games like Minecraft. The, the Minecraft port that replaced all of these ports is not a port at all. It's just the same game, but it's very slightly adjusted so that it can run on different platforms. The button are changed and the settings are changed to allow, uh, for instance, Minecraft Switch to run slightly worse than Minecraft Xbox, which runs worse than Minecraft on a high-end PC. Uh, they, they alter the settings and the things that you have available to you, but the game itself is fundamentally the same, and this makes it very easy for them to update it on all those platforms, and that's one of the biggest reasons that porting doesn't work, because you have to synchronize across the ports, and this is why there always was a delay to update to Minecraft, but basically porting is going away as a thing for the most part. I think, besides the big exception being from, you know, console or PC games to mobile games, something which admittedly 4J Studios has done once. Uh, besides those sorts of ports, you now mostly see games just release on different platforms and be kind of buggy. Uh, and the reason that's possible is because they all use the roughly same architecture. It's a lot easier than it was back in the days where they literally were entirely different systems that would just happen to be very popular. But basically, we live in a world right now where porting isn't a big thing, and therefore 4J Studios, a studio which has an entire repertoire of porting history, is very unlikely to find huge amounts of work doing that. And that would have to assume 
assume that they actually want to do that, that they actually want to, uh, you know, go back to making other people's games. And this is something that to me doesn't sound like it's perfectly likely. Again, 4J Studios is now the, you know, developer behind one of the biggest parts of the biggest game of all time. Uh, you know, them deciding to believe in and deciding to make the great product that was Minecraft and all the different console editions was not only a very good decision for the community of us players, but also is a very profitable decision. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to work out. The 4J Studios has come a long way. They now have the cash if they want to, to back another big game to make their own independent thing if they choose to. And you know, they very much might. And you might be like, well, what are they going to do then? And I think, you know, obviously the link to Minecraft has to be made here, but instead of making it directly and just kind of insinuating it, what if we look back to what 4J has done over the last few years? Because Minecraft, you know, 4J has known this has been coming since the Better Together update released on Xbox, and they very heavily hinted they wanted it on Switch and they wanted it on the PlayStation 4. Both those things have happened now, by the way. Um, but like, they knew this was happening a while off, which is why we saw things like this. Uh, 4J Studios actually uh, invested in a uh, Scottish studio called Puny Astronaut. It said a six-figure sum, so somewhere between 100,000 and 999,999 pounds, although at that point you'd make it a million, but it's somewhere between, you know, like a, a, a somewhere in the hundreds of thousands of pounds was invested into another studio, another Scottish studio, funnily enough, and, uh, you know, that same Scottish studio, if you look at their page, the thing that they're developing and have been developing ever since that investment has been a game called Sky, which if you look on the website uh, is actually described as a gentle exploration game set in a world that couldn't be happier to see you. That's right, they're making some form of exploration game, and although it's 2D uh, based on the, uh, you know, stuff we've seen from it so far, uh, the fact that they've invested a pretty significant amount. Again, six digits. Fun fact is a significant amount of money, at least in my books. And if it's not to you, then fun fact, you can actually give me a six figure digit of money. Just go to streamlabs.com slash toycat and tip me a hundred grand. And you know what? If it's not big to you, then you know what? I'll I'll dance in a monkey costume for you for that amount of money. But uh, basically, my point here is not about the things I would do for 100 grand. It's about the fact that it's a big amount of money for them to invest in a studio, an open world exploration studio, which implies to me that they were sure this is going to be successful. They know about what makes a successful game. They made seven versions of it, in fact. But then you can consider the fact that they have pretty good relationships they had to build over this time to work with the Disneys of the world and the formerly Marvels of the world that is now just the Disneys of the world, um, to work with a lot of companies, even the Simpsons. So I guess that'd be Fox, right? Which I guess that's also Disney now. You know what? I guess they just work with Disney and Disney and other parts of Disney. But like there's lots of different relationships that 4G has with way bigger things than they otherwise would have for a studio their size because of the Minecraft brand and the size of it and the number of different companies that wanted to work with Minecraft to launch some form of skin pack, texture pack, mashup pack, etc. Like we saw for Toy Story, The Simpsons, for Marvel, Avengers and stuff like that. All these sorts of connections exist and therefore you know not only is it possible that they can make their own game but they can also if they really want to probably make a good pitch to one of these other things and potentially use their IP so I think the two big likely possibilities we're gonna see here is either just something brand new from the scratch from the flesh you know we saw uh, ukulele come out of nowhere as like a banjo uh, kazooie spiritual successful uh, without using any of the same IP um, we've seen uh, you know the Fallout New Vegas people and the people who made Fallout 1 and 2 if I'm not mistaken make Outer Worlds which is a better Fallout game than Fallout itself We've even seen, you know, games like City Skyline become more, you know, successful and far bigger than SimCity ever is. Like, who goes back and plays SimCity these days? Not many people. Have you seen how big City Skylines has gotten years after its launch? Um, you know, th these games... Uh, that are made by people who are passionate about what they're doing and, you know, like, don't care about the making a good product before the business model of the game. These are things which are just becoming big on every single platform and every single genre. Again, that's a platformer, that's a city sim, and that's an open world expression game. And, uh, you know, like, uh, I guess RPG, you could argue. But taking for this this same idea of a studio that works for something bigger, uh, you know, leaving that and then making its own thing, is something we've seen many times before. And is it impossible to say that it's going to happen in the open world sandbox genre right here. Minecraft is of course a hugely successful game, but a hugely successful game which is very much weighed down by just the weight of the huge company that's currently sitting on it. Microsoft wants to keep the product, you know, continuing into the future with updates and stuff, um, but obviously the bigger thing that they have on their minds is keeping the game continuously profitable, and they're doing a lot of good things to manage it, and community events and stuff like that that is positive for us, but also at the same time they're doing these slight micro nudges towards players that are a little bit, you know, rubbing them the wrong way, such as now you can not only buy skins and texture packs and resource packs, which already was like a little bit like, okay, that's kind of like, uh, you know, wacky to put that on the main menu. Not only are they going to advertise that to you on a regular basis, there's pop-ups in the game, there's the, you know, main menu button changing every week to remind you, hey, there's things you can buy. You can buy additions to your skins, there's cosmetic DLC for your character in that way. Um, and then on top, of course, on top of that, there's the fact that they sell you servers directly. And that's not considering the fact that, you know, the game is 
free. It's it's paid. You know, it's not free to play. It is a game that you pay for and that people are paying for on a very regular basis. There, my, Minecraft is a huge money machine. It's in the cash cow phase, and because it's run by a huge company, which is mostly interested in releasing new things, which add to the cash part of that, not necessarily the growth part of it. You're gonna see Minecraft do very very good and be very successful for a huge amount of time, and it's gonna do a wonderful job at being the biggest gaming property we've ever seen. But at the same time, what you're gonna see is there's going to be room for a game that doesn't do that. There's going to be room for a game that is just the sandbox that you just, you know, going back to the old style of business models, because the way the world works is progress is necessary. Things need to advance, things need to get better, and they do that all the time. And you know, things change that people don't like all the time, but that become standards soon afterwards. Uh, this is something you see nonstop in the world, such as, I don't know, like, uh, for instance, if you look at airlines, you know, you used to get free bags under the plane, but now you pay for those, and also you pay to pick where you sit and stuff like that. But in exchange, the, the ticket is cheaper. A lot of people are going to, you know, just jump on board that, but a lot of people still fly the old airlines, which will cost more money, but come with those things built in. This is what you'll see in games, where a lot of people are still gonna stick with the new thing, and that's gonna be, uh, you know, the, the old, I guess, the, the new thing, it's gonna be the majority. It's gonna become the big business development, and Minecraft is going to be the most successful sandbox ever, I imagine. It's not gonna lose that position. But there is room for like, what if there was another expiration game, another sandbox where no one can tell you what you can and cannot do? And what if that game had a better, you know, not only, uh, you know, like kind of, I guess, marketing business strategy, but also had the idea of like, oh yeah, and it's developed by people who made that, but also now no longer allowed to make that thing. Uh, it's a very compelling story, which has been successful multiple times. And that is my biggest theory about what they're doing. Something in the sandbox genre, using their expertise, using the fact that they previously invested in this, um, because they are making not only a new game, but new games this year, and I'm very excited to see what it is. Is it gonna involve some different IP? Is it going to be something entirely made up themselves? Is it going to even be like some Minecraft spin-off game? Because of course there's Minecraft Dungeons and there's Minecraft Earth, but maybe, uh, you know, like even though right now it looks like 4J has been shunned really hard by Microsoft, kind of pushed out there, uh, looped your position there. Uh, maybe they did allow them to make something else. Who knows for sure? We won't know. But yeah, something from 4J Studios, the most successful porter um, you know, in Scotland and perhaps the, the whole of the world and perhaps uh, one of the most prolific studios because they made a very big game are making something new this year and I'll keep you up to date because of course they're going to make texture packs and DLCs and stuff that honestly, you know, having played the last few ones, there isn't a lot of hype from the community about but this is the sort of thing you would be hyped to see. What 4J seems to be wildly competent at is making very good ports from one platform in one language to another platform in another language and what they seem to understand is what the players want in an open world genre. They were very good at pleasing the community, which is why when you see the comparison, Microsoft is having a real hard time integrating all those players into the brand new Minecraft Bedrock way of things, despite the fact that it literally has server integration, it literally has infinite worlds, brand new features like bees. Those things are, don't hold up to the way the old things are done. And it's gonna be interesting to see how this goes for 4J. I hope it's a new game in the open world genre, because again, we have Hytale, of course, coming out at some vague point in the future. I wanna see lots of other games try, because a lot of them will fail, but the, the genre Umbra improves as a whole. Competition is the only thing that stops Microsoft from sitting back and just, you know, resting on their laurels. Uh, competition is the thing that makes the genre so much better, and I would love to see other games hop in there. Hopefully, that includes 4J, and even if it doesn't, I'm gonna be curious as to what they work on next regardless. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. I, if you wanna give it a like, then you can do that. You can subscribe also, because YouTubers tell you to do that at the end of videos, and it's so you see more of their videos, because I'd like you to see more of my videos, personally. But maybe that's just me. I hope you'll enjoy this video. I'm getting back into live streaming, so if you wanna see some streams, then I guess you also just subscribe with notifications turned on or follow me on Twitter and hit the bell over there instead because then you can see when I'm streaming, but like ahead of time. I don't know. I'll be streaming probably in the future and I hope you have a great day because I'll see you next time. Goodbye.